The tech market has been pretty tough in the last one and a half years. And in today's job market, it is very difficult even for experienced people to find a job. And the problem is even worse for entry level roles where candidates are competing against hundreds of other candidates, making their odds of landing a job quite slimmer. This inability to land a job even after applying for hundreds of positions for many many months in a row are leading to many people becoming disillusioned and disheartened. Some are even considering abandoning their tech careers altogether. And on top of that there is this looming fear that with the advancements of AI a lot of tech jobs will be eliminated, painting a very bleak outlook for the tech job industry. So in this video, I wanted to share with you what my thoughts are in terms of why the tech market is so hard right now, what I think my prediction for the future is, and most importantly, what you can do in this market to increase your odds of landing a job pretty good. If you look closely, there are five reasons why the tech job market is pretty tough right now. The first one is high interest rates and the high interest actually impact tech job market much more than it impacts other job markets and a very simple explanation for this is that when interest rates are low there is easy access to money and which means that more and more people are willing to take risks whereas when when interest rates are high then access to money is very difficult and people and companies are not willing to take on a lot of risks so when you look at tech industry versus other industry like brick and mortar grocery shops for example tech industry is usually considered very risky where venture capitals and angel investors have to fund a lot of tech innovations and the chances of those ventures becoming successful are not pretty high. Now, as compared to investing in, for example, opening a grocery store chain, the odds of getting your return back on an IT venture is pretty low. That is why when interest rates are high, it impacts all job markets because people are not willing to take on risks, but it especially impacts tech job market because here the chances of risk are pretty high and that is why not a lot of people are willing to spend money on it. That is why we see less and less startups starting in the last one and a half years. There are very few funding rounds and because these companies do not have enough funding, they are not willing to hire people. So that leads to a lot of degrees in the software engineering demand. The second factor is a lot of over hiring for tech jobs during the pandemic. Case in point is Meta, for example. Before pandemic in 2018, their headcount was about 35,000. But during pandemic, they even more than doubled it. Their headcount in 2022 was 85,000 people. The reason companies hired so much during pandemic was first, interest rates were low, so there was easy access to money. And secondly, they were seeing a lot of growth in the tech-related fields. So they went on a hiring spree and hired a lot of people. But when the interest rates started going up and they did not see as much growth as they originally anticipated, then they realized they have overhired and they started laying off people. And that led to decrease in demand, a lot of people getting fired, which saturated the job market. The third reason is what I call Elon Musk effect. Elon Musk, when he took over Twitter, he fired close to 75 to 80 percent of the staff most of them were technical engineers there was a lot of hue and cry in the industry that will lead to demise of twitter and as any twitter user can tell you there was almost no difference in terms of what they were seeing from the twitter end so though initially there was a lot of pushback on what he was doing and a lot of people were anticipating a doomsday for twitter now once he has successfully done it there are a lot of companies which are reflecting that why they would have a lot of engineers which are not adding so much value. Another case in point from Meta. So when Meta acquired WhatsApp, there were just 55 people who were running the platform. Now Meta has currently about 70,000 people and WhatsApp is a big chunk of it. So I'm assuming there are at least 5,000 people who are working on WhatsApp. So consider going from 55 people to 5,000 people. Now you can argue that the app has more users, more features now, but really does it require going from 55 people to 5,000 plus people? And as I've been working myself in the industry for 10 plus years in big corporations, I can attest to this fact myself that there are a lot of people hired in the tech industry, a lot of teams who are working under the umbrella of R&D and companies had previously been fearful of letting them go because they did not want to lose the tech game. And this fear of missing out 
were causing them to invest more and more. But what Elon Musk did, and subsequently a lot of other companies are doing, it is showing them a way that even when you cut the tech engineering jobs, it does not necessarily always lead to a company's demise. The fourth factor which receives a lot of hype, but I do not fully agree with it, is the factor of AI. There is this argument that since ChatGPT and there are a lot of other tech tools, who can write the code itself that means that the software engineering jobs will be eliminated especially the junior level ones i do not fully buy that argument i've been working in tech industry myself i've seen a lot of layoffs happening in my companies and my friends companies and i do not know a single job which was eliminated because it was now automated through ai not a single one. So I do not really buy that argument that AI, especially currently, is at a stage that it starts eliminating tech jobs. In fact, I'm bullish on the thought that as AI becomes more prevalent, as we are seeing, a lot of companies want to invest more into AI, which is leading to more tech jobs, not less. And the fifth factor is that of oversupply. So we saw a lot of tech boom in the last about 10 years, and especially last three, four years. That led to a lot of supply problems. There were a lot of tech jobs, but not enough software engineers to fulfill that job, which means more and more schools started tech programs and more and more students started enrolling them. And then there were boot camps and certifications and all that. And this oversupply is creating a lot of pressure on people who are applying for jobs right now. So these are the five factors which I think are leading to a tight tech job market right now. If you have anything else which you think are important, I would love to know it. So please put in a comment and let me know what your thoughts on this are. Now moving to the next section, what I think the future would be. So let's tackle all these five things one by one. In terms of high interest rates, Fed has already announced that they are planning to start cutting rates later this year. So if they start cutting interest rates by 0.25 or 0.5% from September, October this year, by the next summer, hopefully, the interest rates will be down and more companies and people would be willing to take interest we'll see more venture funding rounds and that will lead to hopefully a lot of hiring the second phenomena of over hiring during pandemic it has almost already settled now we will see that a lot of companies which over hired have already fired a lot of people so i think it has already subsided and it will further subside in the next six to eight months. The third factor of Elon Musk effect. I think that realization is here to stay. Companies now realize they do not need to keep investing in hiring more and more engineers and that correlates with their success in terms of tech. I think this is a good thing because keep throwing a lot of money into a bucket without getting any return this bubble has to burst at some point which I think has bursted now. Companies will be more thoughtful and rational and where they're investing money and hopefully they'll get back a good ROI on that which means they'll be investing much more so the cycle will eventually lead to more funding in the tech industry which leads to more jobs but it won't be just mindless spend so this factor I think is going to stay and I think in a long run it is very positive for the tech industry the fourth factor of AI I have two thoughts on this one that if you are trying to go away from tech job market because you think this is going to be taken over by AI and bots, then where are you planning to go actually? What are your options? What are the fields which will not get impacted by the advancement of AI? I think every field will see some elimination of jobs because of AI. This is just going to happen with every industry. Now, tech industry is probably the only industry where some jobs will be eliminated but a lot more jobs will be created because of the advancement of AI. Think of, there are many jobs like data labeling which will be created because of this advancement of AI. So if you are running away from tech job market because roles will be eliminated because of AI, then rest assured that wherever you go, their roles will be eliminated because of AI. And only in the tech industry, some jobs will be eliminated, but a lot more jobs will be created. Now coming to the fifth factor, which is the oversupply, which happened in the last four or five years, Hopefully, so this one is probably the most difficult to predict because tight job market lasts for two, three years. This would mean that a lot of boot camps and a lot of degree programs will be closed down because they do not have a lot of people who are applying for those. And it will lead to some decrease in the supply of the software engineers. But I don't think this tight job market will last for two, three, four years for this pipeline to actually shrink down. I'm very positive that by the next summer, 
so the tech job market will be much better positioned than it is today. So this just one year of rough time will not impact a lot on that pipeline of supply. I think this factory is going to stay as is. It's just that it is not going to further increase and thrive, but we will not see a lack of supply because of this two year period of rough time in the tech market. So now when I've said a lot about what are the factors which are contributing to the tight job market, what I think the future is gonna look like in one and one and a half years. Now coming to the main question of what you can do in the current job markets to increase your odds of landing a job. So I have three suggestions for you. First, reduce the pressure on yourself of finding a job right now. There are thousands of people, maybe a lot more, who are trying to get a job and especially if you are a fresher and you are coming from school or from some other industry and trying to land a job in tech industry it is super hard i totally get it i know many people who are trying to land a job right now but are unable to get even the recruiter calls so try to reduce your pressure on yourself by a lowering your expectations it is difficult so it's okay and second, if you are in some sort of financial dependence on your landing a job, try to get any other job. Try to work on Walmart, Burger King, wherever, so that you do not have that immediate financial pressure on you that you have to find a tech job in the next two to three months. The second suggestion I have for you is use this downtime or rough time to develop your expertise as well as some credentials in your area. I think a very good roadmap is to sign up for some certifications and just keep doing them one after another. For a lot of people, I recommend just start going doing some cloud certifications so, so that in the next nine to 12 months, when the job market is still tough and you are still not getting enough recruiter calls, you have some roadmap to keep working on so that by the end of this rough period, when you emerge on the other side, even if you do not have job, you still have a lot of very valuable expertise and some very good credentials so that finding a job then is much easier for you. And all this time, all this downtime is actually not a wasted time. And the third suggestion would be just keep applying instead of just focusing on the outcome of I'm not getting any recruiter calls. Just make a ritual, a practice of applying for, let's say 10 jobs every day. So do not think a lot about, I'm not getting any calls. Think about, okay, I have to apply for 10 jobs today. And that's it. Just keep applying day after day after day. As I said, I'm very bullish on the fact that the job market will be in a much better position one year from now which is may june 2025 and it's not just a binary thing that right now it will keep very poor and all out of a sudden it will become better from september october as we see fed decreasing the interest rates we'll see some jobs opening up so there is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel and you should not be very much disillusioned in the tech industry overall and if you're curious about what i think about ai taking over all the tech jobs i've created a separate video for this the link for that should be somewhere here where i've explained in detail what my thoughts are the implication of ai and how it will impact the tech job market so please check it out i hope you'll like it thank you so much for watching